Super Meat Boy any percent for the PC. And uh, yeah, I'm good to go whenever. I just need a thumbs up. No, the SQL error is fine. What's up, Jamaican bacon? Thumbs up. All right, great. Let's uh, let's boogie. All right, we're gonna go in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is Super Meat Boy. Um, I'm gonna be doing the any percent, no major glitches category. In our community, we just kind of shorten it to any percent because the other any percent categories aren't that great. Um. They really, uh, they break open the game and just have you doing less stuff than what the game intends you to do. You just do fewer levels, so we're not too keen on those categories, so we just call this any percent by default. It was the original any percent for, for a long time until we discovered a wrong warp in, like, 2014. Um, so I'm Meat Boy. Uh, I'm going to be reaching Bandage Girl at the end of every stage. Um, but Dr. Fetus will keep taking her away, so the cycle repeats itself quite viciously. Um, because this is any percent, we don't... Oh, jeez. We don't um, get any bandages, we don't go into any warp zones, we don't collect any characters. It's all Meat Boy all the time. Um, so yeah, this is the forest. It's kind of like an introductory chapter, just getting you used to stuff. The thing with regular any percent is that it's like a three and a half minute run, so it's like just really way too short. <laughs> this one actually requires like a, a general knowledge of the game um, across all the chapters, so that's kind of, you know, that's why most people prefer it. Um, we're on the first boss already, this is a Little Slugger. Uh, it's really just Fetus riding this, uh, this weird chainsaw vehicle, it's chasing us down to the, uh, the end of the stage here. You can wind up in one of two places, you can just chill out down here, or you can go um, up here as well. You can also go between Slugger's legs, like that. So, there's any number of fun things you can do with that boss. Alright, that was the first chapter. Um, okay, a word about some of the glitches. We do have like a, like a handful of glitches that we use in this category. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the main one is auto-jump, which you've seen me pausing a few times already, um, and that is to activate a glitch where I jump, I pause the game, I let go of jump and I unpause, and the result is that Meat Boy jumps on the first frame every single time he touches a surface, um, which is really useful for fast climbs. There's, a, there's an especially good example of this at the end of this chapter that I'll point out when we get to it. Um, other kind of salient parts of Hospital include these fans, which blow you every which way. And the closer you get to the fans, the uh, the further they send you. So there's definitely a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of trial and error trying to figure out like how close you should get to the fans in each of these levels. There's also needles and these blobby guys, blood clots. Bacterial infections, all sorts of nasty stuff. All right, so um, a, a word about some other some other jumps in this game that we do. We have uh, these things called sprint jumps, which is kind of a smaller optimization. And sprint jumps are done by toggling the sprint when you're doing consecutive wall jumps, like up a, a larger wall. Um, and by toggling sprint, Meat Boy actually clings a little bit closer to the wall than he would normally. So that's good for like a solid tenth of a second time save per level, but it does add up over the course of the run. So it becomes significant at a higher level of play. Um, there's also storage jumps. You're going to see that in a second. Um, storage jumps are done by basically finishing a level in a certain state that transfers over to the next level. So if I land on top of Bandage Girl here and I'm up against the wall, 
I'll get a little bit of extra height here. I just messed it up, unfortunately. But I would have gotten a little bit of extra height there, um, which would have allowed me to get a slightly faster cycle. So instead we'll just cop out and do the little babby strat. All right, so we're on Chad. Chad has a, an interesting skip going for him as well. It saves about five seconds. Um, if we go fast enough up here, and we grab this key in a speedy fashion, uh, the blood will stop rising. I mean, the blood will keep rising, rather, um, as opposed to it stopping for a few seconds. So it's pretty handy. It's pretty hard to to uh, master. It's uh, one of the first kind of major skips that I learned when I was first picking this game up. No, so in that case, Jamaican Bacon, because I messed up and died on 217, um, I lost storage. So if I had done it first try, I would have had storage, and I would have gotten a faster cycle on that level. Good question, though. Um, <clears throat> so now we're on Factory, which introduces these conveyors and also elevators. Um, they also have some interesting physics going on. Um, if you jump into an elevator, it kind of sends you flying, which is useful for getting up to places pretty quickly like this. We're going to kind of do a skip here, jumping into that elevator, going around the left. This is gap skip, I hope I get it. <laughs> um, I'm going to get low on this elevator, nice. And we'll skip the third elevator entirely. It saves about a second and a half. When you climbed vertically at the top. Oh yeah, yeah, I reactivated auto jump. So auto jump's a little bit different from storage jump. Storage jump gives you that extra spawn height, which I lost, but I can still activate an auto jump whenever. Right, so, so I can reactivate auto jump later in the level and still kind of go flying, but I, I didn't get quite the, uh, quite the strat that I wanted there. This is mono skip. Oops, that was not mono skip. This is no, that was not mono skip either. This is this is mono skip. All right, great. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do this and avoid that platform altogether. Ooh, all right. First try. Okay, this is another skip here. You go up the top. Saves about six seconds, as opposed to waiting for those locks to disappear. Alright, so now we're on to brownie skip. We're gonna do a sprint jump out of bounds here and wind up on the other side of the map. And that was factory. Do you mind if I read a quick donation? Go for it. Hi, right, we got three dollars from Twilight. It says it says I should leave a comment. Thank you for the three dollars. <laughs> What's up, Twilight? Nice comment. Okay, so this is Hell. Hell is arguably the hardest chapter um, to do optimally or close to optimally. It's got a bunch of pretty ridiculous strats. Including this one, which is called Hex Skip. Oh. Nice, I got it. Okay, so um, what I did there was I did a very light tap jump, so I actually lost height on the jump <laughs> instead of gaining height. Um, it's basically the only instance where we do that in the run, so it's a very precise and rather annoying jump. I'm glad that I got it. Because that wasn't looking so hot in the practice runs. But we're in there. Oh, damn. Okay. Backups. <laughs> um, so, yeah, hell's pretty nuts. Just 
a lot of very tight cycles to catch. Um, a, wor a word about the world record for this for this category. Oops. Um, it's 1741 by Hambanu. Before that, Warple had the record for like a year and a half. It was like a 1743. But Ham just beat it like a month or two ago. That long last. We think that 172x is like the upper limit of what people can do, given what we currently know. Um, but 173x is totally possible and on the table for people. I have an 1801 right now. Currently shooting for for that 17 life. But it's it's really tough because of the uh, the RNG that comes up in the next chapter. Also playing basically deathless for the 14 minutes leading up to the next boss, which is basically random. Uh, having really good play leading up, leading up to that can be a real challenge as well. So. But, yeah. So it goes Hambanu with a 1741, Vorpal with a 1743, Zaxt has a 1755 Australian speedrunner, and then it's me. Before that, arguably the most famous speedrun of this category was done in 2012 by a German speedrunner named Exo. And he also had the record for a long time, kind of like Warple. He had an 1839 that he got back in 2012, um, which stood for the better part of two years. Um, it probably has the most views on YouTube, like out of any Super Meat Boy speedrun. And for good reason, like it's really clean. Um, some of the strats are outdated, like he doesn't do brownie skip, um, but it's deathless and like some of the stuff he was going for was basically like IL tier at the time. Like people would, were only doing some of those strats in like individual level attempts. Um, so he kind of knocked it out of the park with that run <laughs> and that record stood for a while. Um, but then Vorpal and some other people came along and started trying to dismantle it. So we've seen almost a minute improvement over the last nearly five years. <laughs> Which just goes to show you how, how optimized Exo's run was back then, and still kind of is. Yeah, I'm using keyboard. I've never played this game on controller. So now we're on Rapture. Rapture has the most randomness out of... Uh, out of any part in the speedrun. Um, there's these things called abominations, which I'll talk about, and then the boss, which I've already mentioned, is uh, basically entirely random. We have a 1 in 10 chance of getting the optimal RNG. Nice. The strat saves a half second, but I'm greedy. Oh my god. Alright, I'll just do the back end. Whatever. Not that greedy. I'm selectively greedy. Um, in casual play, a lot of people stop playing this game altogether once they hit this chapter because these repulsors, um, little pulsating orbs, these guys are like impossible to figure out. Um, they're kind of like fans, they send you out in various directions. Oh my god, dude, help. They send you out in various directions. Um, but the, tra the trajectory that they send you in is just kind of strange. It's like this weird circular arc. Um, so they take a long time to master. Um, some more... I don't know. Some more switch levels here. These guys are pretty manageable. This is a really tight cycle that I'm gonna go for here. Ah, I missed it. Ideally I would have gotten a very clean jump off of that wall and gotten a 12 second time. But we'll do a backup and I guess get a 15 second time, that's cool. Alright, so these are the abominations I was talking about. Um, they run and they jump based on what you do, um, but they never really do the same thing twice, <laughs> so you kind of have to adapt your, your play to, to what they do on a couple of stages. Um, it can be a really major setback for newer runners who aren't used to how to behave. Once you kind of figure it out, you can basically clear levels the same way every time. But it's never 100% clear what they're going to do until they do it. 
This is a warp zone up here. We're gonna try not to hit it. We did it. Hitting that warp zone costs about 15 seconds, and it's like totally in the way, and it has a massive hitbox. Oh my god, I was not expecting to land there. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. So, you're supposed to grab some keys on this stage, we don't do that. We just go around the outside. And finish it in under 10 seconds, otherwise it'd take like twice as long. Another big skip here. This is a huge expansive level, but you can just jump right to the end. This is the last stage in Rapture, then we're gonna go to Larry, the Rapture boss. Hopefully we'll get in and out, but it's never a guarantee. Pray for me. Okay, so we want him to jump three times in a row. That almost never happens, so he kind of just goes on indefinitely. Like so. Just wait politely for him to do his thing. This is this is not even close to being a three cycle. All right, that was a good finish at least. Okay. He didn't put us over estimate, so I'm thankful. We are in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, could not three cycle. Once he uh, decided to stall on me. So we're, we are at the final chapter now. Uh, we got five stages here. Most of them are kind of gauntlet style levels, so nice. Um, ranging from 15 to like... Oh my god, dude. Ranging like 15 to like 23, 24 seconds. Oh, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Alright, this will be a little bit more than... <laughs> Uh, the 22 to 24 seconds I was just talking about, but that's, that's fine. This is the longest stage in the run. And there are certainly ways in which you can make it longer. Oh no, dude. Got caught in the elevator. So we're gonna do a backup here. Hanging in. Alright, good stuff. <laughs> backups on backups. Oh my- oh jeez, alright, alright. It's all good. We're fine. We're still... Maybe underestimate. Let's go. Oh my god, dude. The, the tilt right now that's going on in real time is just... Too much. Alright. Go. All right. This is Omega. This can take people like one to two hours to beat on their first try because it's just really difficult. We can do a keyless strat here. Saves a few seconds. And we're off to the final boss. Fetus. So we can get around these saw towers by just going fast, basically. Just getting ahead of them, like so. And now we really have nothing to worry about. We can just take our time. It's actually harder to clear this stage if you are stuck in between the saws, <laughs> but once you, once you get around them, it's actually exceptionally easy. So we have to be on this button. Um, if we jump off of this button or move away from it, like if we decide to do this and stay that way, um, then the saw tower will hit us, but for some reason when you're on this button you don't have collision, so the saw tower can pass right through us. 
So we're coming up on time here. Um, this is escape. I have bandage girl on my back now. We just gotta make it to the end. Hopefully without any major crises. Leap of faith, nice. And time. 1939 it looks like. So that was Super Meat Boy. In a little under 20 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. Give money to Konosumi so you can do a cool thing in California. Everyone will benefit from it. I promise. It's the right thing to do. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. If you guys want to watch the cutscene, I guess we can do that. Or we can just move right along. I don't know what the marathon organizers want to do, but... Thanks, everybody. This is the light ending. The, the dark ending's a little bit longer than this. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but... But there is an alternative ending to this. If you do a lot more levels, which is kind of cool. But for doing the bare minimum, we get this kind of brief cutscene. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys later.